Hi, this is John Ainsley, CTO at Dulos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about TLM connections in UVM. This is really a tutorial on transaction level modeling in UVM. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be taking advantage of the easier UVM coding guidelines and the easier UVM code generator. Of course, the advantage of using a code generator is that you'll be able to download the code generator and reproduce any of the examples you see here for yourself. The coding guidelines and the code generator you can find at the URL shown here, and they're available under an Apache 2.0 license. Anyway, let's dive into transaction level modeling in UVM. So UVM uses TLM connections or transaction level modeling connections between all of the class based components in the verification environment. So on this diagram, you can see transaction level connections between sequencer and driver and transaction level connections used to distribute transactions from the agent around other components in the verification environment for analysis, by which I mean coverage collection and checking. So this diagram actually shows that the main, most characteristic kinds of TLM connections that you're going to encounter in a UVM environment. And during this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the code from the code generator corresponding to each of these connections and explaining all the main concepts that you need. Toward the end of the tutorial, I'll also be going a little bit deeper and showing you some further techniques involving transaction level connections in UVM. So let's look at transaction level modeling UVM style. Transaction level modeling reduced to its bare essentials means communicating using function calls. So we communicate between the building blocks or components in our UVM verification environment by making a task or function declared in one component available for being called from another component. Now, this is just system Verilog programming. So Theoretically, there's nothing to stop the driver in this example calling the get task from the sequencer directly, providing it knows its name. But that would create a dependency between the driver and the sequencer and make the code hard to maintain. So in UVM, we do the connections indirectly through so-called ports and exports. This nomenclature ports and exports, by the way, has been borrowed from System C. In fact, UVM borrows the TLM1 standard from System C and re-implements that in System Verilog. Anyway, back to the example here. Rather than the driver calling the get task directly, the driver calls the task through a port, which is connected to an export on the sequencer. So what an export does is to declare that a particular component is going to provide a particular task or function. So in this example, the UVM sequence item pull implementation says that our sequencer provides an implementation of the get task. The port, for its part, declares that a particular component requires a particular task to be available because it's going to call it. So in this case, UVM sequence item pull port says that our driver is going to call the get function. And then at the top level, when we instantiate the sequencer and the driver, we connect the port to the export. And that effectively seals a contract between the provider and the requirer of a particular method. So you can see down at the bottom here, we're calling the connect method of the sequence item port that's built into UVM in order to connect the port on the driver to the export on the sequencer. This jargon of port and export always confuses people because in seeing, when you see the term export, you assume that the, something is going out from the sequencer. Well, what goes out from the sequencer isn't the call to the get task. Rather, the export reflects the fact that the sequencer is exporting or providing the get task so that the driver can call it. So thinking about it, the task is being provided from left to right. The transaction is being passed from left to right. But the get task itself is being called from right to left. I'll come back to that point again a little bit later. Let's take a look at the actual concrete code that comes out of the code generator for this particular example. 
So here we've got an agent and in the connect phase of the agent we can see the connection between the port on the driver and the export on the sequencer. So here the port sequence item port on M driver is being connected to the export sequence item export on M sequencer and that's all happening within, within the connect phase method of our agent. We now take a look at the run phase method of the driver. In the run phase method of the driver, we're calling a method, well, two methods, get next item and item done in this particular case, of the sequence item port. So sequence item port is just the port that we saw declared on the driver and, and connected up on the previous slide. The TLM connections in UVM have certain rules, that is, they have a certain protocol. Let's take a look at three of the, the commonest used methods as a representative sample, put, get and write. So put is used to send transactions and put is a blocking method, which means that put doesn't return until the receiver of the transaction is ready to receive the next call to put. And the result of that is if you make a series of calls to put, each of the transactions gets passed from end to end. So put is guaranteed not to overwrite or lose any objects. And in effect, the same applies to get, which is also a blocking method. So the caller calls get to ask for a request and the implementation of get blocks until it's ready to return the transaction until the request is ready. And when get returns, the object is effectively removed from the callee, removed from the right hand side here, so that next time you call get, you're going to receive the next transaction in the stream. And the result of these semantics is that a series of calls to put or a series of calls to get are going to pass a stream of transactions without any of the transactions getting lost. And that makes these calls very, very robust. The third method here is the write method, and the write method is a non-blocking method that's used with analysis ports. Non-blocking means that write doesn't consume any time but returns immediately. And because of that, the implementation of write must, part, must process the transaction that's passed as an argument immediately. So you know when you call to write that it's going to process the transaction immediately and return straight away. You can use these put, get and write methods to implement either push connections or pull connections. And we can see an example of each on this slide. So the, at the top, we've got a call to put, which is implementing a push connection between the producer on the left and the consumer on the right. So the producer calls put to push a transaction to the consumer, the consumer implementing the put task. At the bottom of the slide, we've got a pull connection. So the consumer on the left is calling get to pull a transaction from the producer on the right hand side. Again, the producer on the right hand side implementing the get task. So perhaps you can spot a potential confusion here. With TLM connections, you've always got to be on the lookout for the contrast between the direction of control flow and the direction of data flow. So with a push connection, control is flowing from left to right, and the transaction is also being passed from left to right. With a pull connection, the control is flowing from left to right, the consumer is calling get, but the transaction is passing from right to left, the producer is returning the transaction back to the consumer. So in the TLM world, ports allow a component to call tasks or functions declared outside themselves, and exports allow components to receive incoming calls to tasks or functions that are implemented within those components. You can see here that we've used a circle as the symbol to indicate the export and labelled that as either an export or an imp. It could be either. The difference is that an export is effectively a waypoint in a series of TLM calls and the imp marks the end of the line, the place where that task or function is actually going to be implemented. So if a component has an export, then the component would pass that transaction to a child component for processing. If a component has an imp, then the component must itself provide an implementation of the corresponding task or function. We'll see examples of that as we go through this tutorial. 
This is the canonical diagram for TLM connections. It's really important that you can visualize this diagram at any stage in order to have a good intuitive feel for how TLM connections work. So on the left hand side of the diagram, we've got ports and calls to the method put going up through the component hierarchy. On the right hand side of the diagram, we've got exports and calls to the method put going down through the component hierarchy. So ports are used to make method calls up and out of components. Exports are used to make method calls down and into components. So on the left, we've got a child component that's calling put through its port. The port on the child is connected to a port on the parent component and so on up till we get to the top of the component hierarchy. At the top of the hierarchy, the port on the component on the left is connected to an export on the component on the right. And then export is connected to export down through the component hierarchy until eventually the connections terminate at the imp. And the component that has the imp is obliged to actually provide an implementation of the corresponding method, that is the task or function, the put task in this particular case. So remember, ports are used to pass method calls out of components. Exports are used to pass method calls down into components. And at the top of the component hierarchy, you create peer-to-peer -peer connections between ports and exports. So I'd advise you to think long and hard about this diagram. It can really help out. Now let's take a look at analysis ports. Analysis ports are very commonly used in UVM. In effect, they provide a broadcast mechanism. An analysis port allows an agent to send transactions off for analysis, but the agent neither knows nor cares where the transactions are going. One of the key features of analysis ports, in fact, is that you don't have to connect them at all. So in this example, we have an analysis port on the monitor that's connected to an analysis port on its parent component, the agent. But the analysis port on the agent doesn't have to go anywhere. Or it could be connected to another component, in this case to a UVM analysis export on the component that we've named subscriber. A subscriber is a component that can subscribe to receive the transactions sent out through analysis ports. And an analysis port could be sent connected to no subscribers, one subscriber, or to many subscribers. Again, that's the main feature of analysis ports. They don't have to be connected at all. They could be connected to a single subscriber, or they could be connected to many subscribers. And the subscribers here, again, would be the checking or coverage collection components in your UVM verification environment. The method that we call through, the, through an analysis port is always named write. So the monitor here is making a call to the write method of its analysis port. That write method is propagating up through the analysis port on the agent and then being passed around to all of the subscribers connected to that analysis port. The write method takes a single argument, which is an input argument. In other words, the write method can only read the value of the incoming transaction. The write method is not allowed to modify the value of the transaction it receives. Effectively, it's read only. Also remember that the write method is non-blocking. It must consume the transaction and return immediately. Because the write method returns immediately, and because the write method isn't allowed to modify the transaction it receives, it doesn't matter the order in which the write methods of the individual subscribers get called. In fact, you have no control in effect over the order in which the write methods within the subscribers are called when write is called from the monitor. Analysis ports effectively provide a one-to-many form of connection, one analysis port being able to broadcast transactions to many subscribers. That's in contrast to regular ports and exports that are strictly one-to-one. -one. So when you have a port, it has to be connected to exactly one export. When you have an analysis port, it doesn't have to be connected at all, or it could be connected to one or many analysis exports. Also on this diagram, we can see an example of a pull connection and a push connection. So the driver has a pull connection to its sequencer. Driver calls get or get next item to pull transactions from the sequencer. 
The analysis port, on the other hand, provides a push connection. The write method pushes transactions out through its analysis port. Within the agent, we have an example of a peer-to-peer -peer connection between a port on the driver and an export on the sequencer. On the left-hand side, on the other hand, we have an example of a child-to-parent connection. So an analysis port on the monitor, the child component, is connected to an analysis port on its parent, the agent. And then we have a peer-to-peer -peer connection between the analysis port on the agent and the exports on the three subscribers. Now we're going to take a look at the source code in UVM for this example, such as you could generate from the code generator. And we'll start out with the monitor, and this will show you the typical coding pattern for using analysis ports. So this particular code we can see here is boilerplate code from the code generator. If you remember from previous tutorials, the code in blue is a variable field within the boilerplate code that's been pulled in from one of the interface template files that are used to drive the code generator. So if we're going to use an analysis port, we need to declare the analysis port in our class. And then we need to construct the analysis port by calling the constructor, the new function. Now it turns out that the analysis port has to be created using a raw constructor. The analysis port doesn't support the UVM factory mechanism. And because of that, instead of creating the analysis port by calling the create method, which we would always do within the build phase method of a component, we've called the analysis port within the constructor of the monitor component. So we have the constructor of the monitor saying analysis port equals new to construct the analysis port. If you don't remember to construct the analysis port, then the analysis port is just going to be a null reference by default. And when you call, come to call methods through that analysis port, you're going to get a runtime error. So here's the run phase of the monitor component. And the code here is split into two parts. At the top, we have boilerplate code that's generated from the code generator. It always looks very similar. At the bottom, we've got a user-defined code fragment that was sucked in from an include file by the code generator. And this user-defined code fragment is looking at the pin wiggles going on on the design under test, assembling those pin wiggles into a transaction object, and then sending that transaction object out through the analysis port by calling the write method of the analysis port. And that is an absolutely typical coding pattern for a UVM monitor. Monitors typically look at pin wiggles, assemble those pin wiggles into transactions, and send the transactions out through the analysis port. Now moving up in the component hierarchy, here once again is the connect phase of the agent. And in this case, we can see the two connections being made. At the top, the analysis port on the monitor is connected to the analysis port on the agent. And at the bottom, once again, we can see the peer-to-peer -peer connection between the port on the driver and the export on the sequencer. Then moving up in the component hierarchy once more, we get to the env class for this particular agent. So in the build phase method of the env, we're instantiating the agent component and the subscriber or coverage collection component. And then in the connect phase method of the env class, we're calling the connect method of the analysis port to connect the analysis port on the agent to the analysis export on the subscriber. Now we can take a look at the subscriber. So UVM subscriber is one of the standard base classes in UVM that extends UVM component. In other words, UVM subscriber is another kind of component, just as a driver, a monitor, and an agent are all kinds of component. And thing, the thing that's special about a UVM subscriber component is that it has one analysis imp built into it. So the export or analysis imp that you can see on the diagram is actually implemented within the UVM subscriber base class. All you have to do when you extend the UVM subscriber base class is to implement the write method that's associated with that analysis imp. Every component that has an analysis imp has to provide the corresponding write method. So down at the bottom of the boilerplate code here, you can see an implementation of the right method of the clock and data coverage class. Incidentally, if you have a subscriber and you don't implement the right method, you'll get a compile time error. 
So this particular subscriber is being used to do some coverage collection. That's the typical thing that you would do in a subscriber in UVM alongside checking. So the subscriber class has a cover group and then within the write method we're taking the incoming transaction using that to assign a local variable and then calling the sample method of the cover group to sample the cover group and write those values to the coverage database. We're also checking whether the coverage of that particular cover group has reached 100% yet, and if it has, we're setting the M is covered flag. So in the last part of this tutorial, I'm going to explore two further techniques which will help you understand transaction level modelling in UVM in a little more detail. These aren't particularly advanced techniques, but they do help you help to reinforce your conceptual understanding of what's really going on here. So the first technique we're going to look at is dealing with multiple incoming transaction streams. And the second technique is storing analysis transactions for later if you don't want to process those transactions straight away. So first of all, multiple incoming transaction streams. And we'll encounter exactly this issue in the Easier UVM code generator if you have the code generator generate a reference model for you. A reference model typically has to deal with multiple incoming transaction streams. To do that in UVM, the challenge that we have is that each incoming transaction stream is going to need to have a write method associated with it to process incoming analysis transactions. But System Verilog doesn't support function overloading, and that means in System Verilog, within a single class, you can't have multiple methods of the same name. So to get around that language restriction in System Verilog, UVM provides a helper macro, UVM Analysis Imp Decl. This is a very useful macro to have at your disposal. What this macro does is to declare a new class and an associated write method. The class is named UVM Analysis Imp, followed by the suffix that's declared as an argument to the macro. So in this particular example, we've got two macros declaring the two suffixes underscore zero and underscore one. And those macros create two new classes that we've used to declare our analysis export variables. The macros also declare two new methods, write underscore zero and write underscore one, that we override in place of the default write method. And note that our reference model isn't a subscriber, it's a component because it's got two incoming transaction streams. We can only use UVM subscriber if we've got a single incoming transaction stream because UVM subscriber has a single analysis export built into it. The final feature we'll take a look at is what to do if in a subscriber you don't want to process the incoming transaction straight away, but you want to save it for later. We can do that by using a regular UVM component in place of a UVM subscriber, and then within that component, forwarding the transaction to a FIFO. In other words, we're taking the incoming transaction through the analysis export and then internally posting that transaction into a FIFO so that we can consume it later at our leisure. UVM provides a FIFO for you. UVM TLM Analysis FIFO is a built-in class for exactly this purpose. So neither the analysis export nor the FIFO are registered for factory automation, so we've instantiated those objects within the constructor, within the new function of the subscriber. Then in the connect phase, we've made the child to parent component between the incoming analysis export and the analysis export on our FIFO component. So any transactions coming in through the analysis port will now be forwarded straight to the FIFO and the FIFO actually has the UVM analysis imp and the write method built into it. We then have a run phase task for our FIFO subscriber and in an infinite loop we're calling the blocking get method to get the next transaction from the FIFO. So first time we come through this loop, if the subscriber hasn't yet received any analysis transactions from the agent, the get will block until the first analysis transaction arrives. So, in this tutorial I've reviewed all the basic features of TLM connections in UVM. 
We've seen that we can have one-to-one -one connections between regular ports and exports, such as is used between the UVM driver and the UVM sequencer. And then we can have one-to-many connections between analysis ports and analysis exports. And those one-to-many connections are used to distribute transactions around the UVM environment for coverage, collection and checking. So that brings us to the end of this particular video. At Dulos, we deliver training classes, and we can run training in hardware design, hardware verification, ESL and System C, embedded systems, ARM processor technology, and also FPGA technology. If you want to know more, check out our website, www.dulos.com.